ever get that feeling, you know, where you read a news story and you just know there's got to be more to it? Like it's just scratching the surface of something way bigger. Oh, absolutely. Like you're just seeing the tip of the iceberg. That's exactly what we're dealing with today. This whole Sinwar thing, the Hamas leader, it's about way more than one operation. Right. This goes way deeper than just, oh, they took out a high value target. We're talking about the whole future of the conflict in Gaza, maybe even beyond. Exactly. And the source material we've got it gets pretty intense, you know, like it really paints a picture. Yeah, it doesn't pull any punches. Okay, so the news, it's all Israel confirmed Sinwar is dead. But then you read what our sources are saying, and it's almost like, I don't know, almost theatrical. You're hitting on something there. This wasn't just a mission. It was a statement, a very calculated message, and they weren't subtle about it. Not subtle at all. I mean, one source, it describes, well, it's graphic. Let's just say that. Sinwar's remains, the details, they were pretty hard-hitting. Intense, yeah, and I think there's a reason for that. The source, they compare it to what the cartels do in Mexico, you know, putting things on display. Brutal, but it sends a message. Right, intimidation tactics. Yeah. But you highlighted something interesting. One source, they said this went beyond just trying to scare people. Exactly. It's about shattering a narrative. Hamas, they've built this whole identity around being untouchable, their leaders being invincible, this just blows that apart. It's like they're saying, look, we can get to anyone, anywhere, doesn't matter who you are. And they're saying it to everyone, not just Hamas. The whole world's watching. This is a power move on a global scale. So if this is all about sending a message, and we're talking about the global stage, yeah. what happens next? Because one thing's for sure, this isn't over. Oh, no, not even close. Netanyahu himself said the war in Gaza is going to keep going. So that's the big question, isn't it? If this is really the beginning of the end for Hamas, like some sources are saying, then who or what is Israel actually fighting now? It's like they're playing chess, you know? Yeah. Take out the queen, think you've got them, checkmate's coming, but yeah. then, bam, they hit you with some move you didn't see coming. And that's Netanyahu saying the war is not over, right? That's the curveball. Mm. You take out the head of Hamas, but you're still gearing up for a fight. It's a bit of a head scratcher. Definitely. So if Hamas is on its last legs, like some of these sources are suggesting, who or what is Israel still fighting? Well, that's where it gets interesting. See, one source, they made this point that, yeah, taking out a figurehead like Sinwar, that's huge. But the thing is, the ideology, that anger, it doesn't just disappear overnight. No, absolutely not. It's like taking down a mob boss, right? You still got all the lieutenants, the underbosses, all scrambling for power. Exactly. And in all that chaos, that's where things can get even more unpredictable. New factions popping up, maybe even more extreme than the last. So is that what Netanyahu's thinking? That a weakened Hamas means a new enemy, one that's even more dangerous, one that maybe even serves their interests better. It's definitely a possibility. We've seen it before in other conflicts, haven't we? The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Maybe taking out Sinwar wasn't about ending the war with Hamas, but more about setting the stage for what comes next. Man, that's a chilling thought. But strategically, you can kind of see the logic, can't you? Yeah, and it shows that this goes way beyond just military objectives, doesn't it? We're talking about ideology, about who has the power, about how this whole conflict is being framed. And that's something that reaches far beyond Gaza. Speaking of how things are framed, one of the sources that made this comparison, Sinwar's death, and then leaders like Hitler, even Xi Jinping now. I gotta be honest, that felt a little out there. It's definitely a bold connection, I'll give you that. But yeah. stick with me, because I think it gets at something important about how power works, how these narratives take hold. You see all these figures, they represent something, an idea, like this is how it is, this is how it's always gonna be, this sense of inevitability. And then, when that figure is gone, Exactly. Suddenly everything's up in the air. It leaves this void. And how that void gets filled, what stories people tell themselves about it, well, that's what shapes the future. It's like watching someone on a tightrope, you know, yeah. lose their balance. And you know something's got to give, but you have no idea which way they're going to fall. And in this case, the whole region, maybe even the world, is holding its breath, waiting to see where that fall is going to land. The stakes are that high. So here we are. Hamas, potentially out of the picture, mm. but the war is still going mm. and a whole lot of what ifs mm -hmm. hanging in the air. <laughs> this is a lot to process. It really is. But maybe the biggest thing to take away from all this is that sometimes the most important stories aren't the ones happening right in front of us, but the ones playing out behind the scenes, the ideas, the motivations, the narratives that are driving everything forward. It really makes you think. So if we're talking about shaping the narrative, trying to influence what comes next, 
What message is Netanyahu really sending when he says, this war in Gaza, it's not over? Who's he talking to? That, my friend, is the million dollar question. And it's one we'll be diving into right after the break. So that million dollar question, Netanyahu saying this isn't over, that the war in Gaza continues. Mm. If it's not just about Hamas anymore, if there's a bigger audience he's trying to reach, who's he talking to? I think it's a message with a few different layers, you know? On the yeah. one hand, yeah, he's sending a signal to anyone who might be thinking about stepping in. Hezbollah, Iran, even groups we haven't even considered yet. It's like, don't even think about it. We're not backing down. Classic deterrent strategy. Show strength prevent a bigger fight. Exactly. But our sources, they also point to something deeper going on here. It's not just about the military stuff. It's about the story that's being told, how the world sees this whole conflict, even with Hamas, maybe out of the picture. So controlling the narrative, shaping global opinion, that kind of thing. Exactly. Like, By keeping the sense of urgency alive, you know, this idea that Israel is still under threat, even without Hamas in the picture. Well, that keeps the international community on their side. They need that support. So it's like they're shaping the story even as the situation on the ground changes. Exactly. And that's where this whole idea of narratives, it all comes together. Because at the end of the day, the future of Gaza, the whole region, really, it might not be decided by who has the most firepower. It might come down to whose story, whose version of events ends up winning out. Wow. It's kind of mind-blowing when you think about it. We, we started with this one news story, Hamas leader gone, and now we're talking about global power struggles, ideology, this whole battle for hearts and minds. And that's the thing to remember, right? We can't look at these events in a vacuum. We got to dig deeper, ask ourselves if what we're being told is the whole story. Because sometimes the biggest impact comes from the things happening below the surface. It's a good reminder to always be thinking critically, especially with everything going on in the world. Don't just take the headlines at face value. There's always more to the story. Always. And sometimes those untold stories, the ones playing out in the shadows, they're the ones that really shape our world. That's something to think about. So to everyone listening, as we continue to see what unfolds in Gaza and beyond, remember to keep asking those tough questions. Keep digging for the truth. Stay engaged, stay informed. And until next time, thanks for joining us on The Deep Dive.